Okay, today we are looking at main body paragraph two of our uh, essay on the alchemist. Um, today I decided to do something a little bit different because uh, you'll notice that I've already written um, the second main body paragraph, main body paragraph two. So I could even just put that here in brackets just to kind of help uh, keep things uh, smooth and uh, kind of well organized. Obviously, at the end when the essay is done, I would I would just remove that. Um, but what what I wanted to do today is. Um, when you're in the essay writing process, the three main body paragraphs are actually um, kind of near familiars of each other. They're kind of like mirrors of each other. So they should essentially follow the same structure. So yesterday I demonstrated writing uh, main body paragraph one uh, from scratch. Um, uh, and the, the idea was the development of our main character Santiago. That was the topic uh, for main body paragraph one, which uh, matches with our thesis statement, right? So if we go up here, we can see this is our thesis statement. I'll just highlight the thesis in blue. Um, and of course, as I, as I recommended, uh, before I started my writing today, I reread the essay prompt, which is essentially uh, that this essay is an analysis essay and you will investigate the novel through a three window lens of analysis. So uh, basically that's given us our three main topics here, which I've selected, character development, omens, and then achieving potential. Okay, so character development, we've already completed that one. This morning, before starting this video, I wrote the paragraph on omens, main body paragraph two. Um, but instead of demonstrating the actual writing process, because I did that with the first main body paragraph, uh, I've what I've done is I just went through and went ahead and, and wrote it as a first draft. But then I went through and added all of the comments that I would normally put if I was marking a paper. So today's uh, video is essentially a look at how you can take my comments, my feedback comments, and transform your, or revise maybe, hopefully transform, but revise your paragraph to make it stronger, tighter, clearer, and on point with uh, all of the things that we need it to have, like the citations, making sure that the APA verb tenses and um, citation details are all correct. So uh, I'll go through, I'll read the sentences, then I'll talk about the comments on the, on the right in our sidebar here, and then I will fix them. So this is the revision process, and I'm actually going to do uh, revision uh, for both main body paragraph two and three, so that's today and tomorrow. And then remember, Friday, I will be putting out the special video on how to write the conclusion. Um, and I'm gonna do that before the weekend hits so that you have the whole weekend to finish your essay. Because basically next week should be focused on preparing for the final exam, right? So we wanna get the essays uh, completed, or at least the first draft completed, ASAP, get that into me so that I can add my feedback comments to help and guide your revisions. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we're moving into main body paragraph two now. Santiago's journey tests him at every turn, but it is, his, it is his awareness of omens that guides him through these troubles. So there's our main theme, which is evident in the topic sentence. We're going to be talking about omens in this uh, paragraph. So that's quite clear, which is what you want. You want your topic sentence to guide the reader, to be very clear for the reader. Here's what we're going to talk about in this paragraph. Now notice there is a comment attached to uh, that first sentence, and it says here, uh, I would have lost a quarter point in my marking system. You know I'm deductive, so I take away marks for each mistake. Um, and in particular, I'm guiding the writer here uh, as the editor or as the marking body. I'm guiding the writer here by saying, hey, it's a compound sentence, so I need to have a comma there between clause one and clause two. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve that, make it go away. I'll add the comma, and now we fix that. So this is the revision process. Onwards. Right from the beginning of the story, Santiago is aware that omens can track your luck and progress along your course. So I've got uh, two, two, two comments for this sentence. Firstly, I've said quarter point would be lost here because this is wordy or repetitive, and I've asked the uh, author to revise this sentence. So yeah, luck and progress, they're kind of related concepts here, right? And I actually think that because of the overall theme, that or the overall... Um, 
thesis statement that we've created, we know that we're leading towards, we've talked about character development, now we're talking about these omens as road signs that help Santiago move forward, and then finally we're talking about him attaining his greatest potential. So I think that actually progress is a better choice here out of the two. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve this comment, and then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of luck. Now also, we've got word choice for your. Your might not be the best uh, choice here, and I've indicated that with my comment. So I think that we should keep this focused on Santiago. So we'll change this to his progress along his course. Your is more general. His is more specific to the character that we're looking at. So I think that's a better choice. Good, let's keep moving. His grandfather taught him that some things he encountered indicate luck, like butterflies and lizards, and the king of Salem clearly directs Santiago that the omens will guide him towards his personal legend. So then I've got my citation here, a non-integral citation. There's the author's name, Quello. There's the date of the publication of the edition that we're reading from, the 2014 edition. And then I've got uh, the page number that I pulled that uh, paraphrase from. Uh, correctly indicated here. Now I've noted to the writer that this is an APA format issue. As we know, um, verb tense is important to separate the paraphrase from the analysis or so there's you're you're restating something, you're paraphrasing something, that's called your citation, right? So in our citation we want APA calls for verbs to be in the past tense. So I need to alter this second verb because it's still part of the same sentence, right? This is a compound sentence. This is my paraphrase sentence, right? So I need to correct this. So I'll go ahead and resolve that and I can easily just switch that into the past tense. Okay, good. Moving on. Now notice, I talked about progress here, uh, but then there's luck down here. Maybe we could change luck to good fortune is maybe a little bit more in line with the way we've set up the sentences leading up to um, our current position. So you'll note here we've got past tense, right? That's correct. Then we've also got past tense. So now here at the beginning of the next sentence, we notice it switches to the present tense and that's perfect because now we've moved from our citation paraphrase into our analysis. So let's see what the analysis, what the writer has stated, uh, to how are they directing the reader? How are they uh, guiding the reader with their ideas here? This shows that Santiago is on a spiritual quest and I've got another indication, and he must trust his intuition to reach his ultimate destination. So again, this is one of the common errors that I'm still seeing in our writing, and that is that when we write a compound sentence, you need to have a comma before the fanboy's coordinating conjunction, before the fanboy's family member here, the coordinating conjunction and. We really need a comma there because we've got uh, a subject in clause two, and we've got our, our, new, our new verb uh, in main verb in clause two. So actually this is a, a complete clause complete idea. So when we when we write a compound sentence, we need that comma there, right? So we'll just go ahead and resolve this. And again, I will correct that by adding the comma. Good. Pushing on. So that's the analysis sentence there. So next, so always remember we have our triad of support. This is the way we're setting up uh, our paragraphs. And we, we know that you have your, your idea, then you have your citation, which is your evidence, your support. Right? And then you have your analysis of that evidence explaining how it is relevant to the argument that you're making, to the push of your essay or the thesis of your essay. So um, we, we want that content idea, citation support, and then analysis. But the other thing that's often not talked about is when you're moving from your first triad into your second triad, you need uh, a connecting sentence or a transition sentence that smooths the way, that moves things nicely from that first idea or first piece of evidence to the second main idea, okay? 
So let's take a look. This naturally, so we've finished our analysis. So naturally, this section here, we would expect that this is where the transition uh, will exist. Maybe it'll be a sentence long, and maybe it'll be two sentences long, but it should transition us to this next main point. So let's see if, if the writer has uh, successfully accomplished that. Time and again along his path, the omens appear when he needs them. Perfect. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, this, this is indicating to the reader, okay, I've, I've given you the first piece of evidence. You know, the king of Salem has told him, hey, pay attention attention to the omens, buddy. They're going to show you how to get through this, uh, this quest you're on, right? So now I'm indicating, hey, it wasn't just that first time. It happens over and over again as he's moving towards his ultimate uh, end of his quest, right? The omens are there, kind of like road signs or milestones to help him when he needs them, right? Good. So now let's take a look. Time and again along his path, the omens appear when he needs them. He connects the other character. He connects with other characters through the omens. So this is my next uh, main idea, my next content uh, sentence. So that's the beginning of my second triad. But as I've indicated in my notes here, uh, there's a transitional cue missing here. So uh, although we have correctly used a sentence to smooth the way for our second main idea, we should also have a transitional cue here to um, increase the um, smooth writing or the connected writing. So I will use one of my favorites. Furthermore, so that means additionally on the same point or supporting the same thing I just said. Furthermore, he connects with other characters through omens. Now I'm, so that's my second content idea and now we can expect my next citation to appear, which it does. And this one is an integral citation as we can see because here's the author's name starting the sentence. Quello 2014 demonstrates the timely arrival of Ur Urim and Thummim, the two decider stones giving Santiago giving to Santiago by the old king at just at the moment when he is about to give up on searching for his treasure, page 64. Okay, so there are multiple problems with this sentence. There are errors that need to be corrected. And I've got my guiding notes here in the sidebar. So the first of them is uh, the fact that, again, we've got a verb tense issue. This is not a correct um signal verb. That's the name of the verbs that we put in our citations, in our paraphrase citations. Um, we want those verbs in the past tense, as we've already indicated. So this is a repeated error here, but we can simply fix it by switching this into the past tense. So Quello demonstrated the timely arrival of Urim and Thummim, the two decider stones giving. Okay, so what's going on here? Our second note. Uh, clarity slash verb tense. This phrase needs revision. Moreover, giving is in the wrong verb tense. So we can fix this one by putting this into the correct form into the correct word form. So Urim and Thummim, the two decider stones given to Santiago by the old king. Comma, just at the moment. So here we have a complex B error. That means when we have our subordinate conjunction in the middle of the sentence, we do not need a comma here. So we can resolve this and remove that comma. Let's see, how did this turn out here? Just at the moment, the two decided stones given to Santiago by the old king. Good. And you notice this is a scoopable phrase, right? So we need commas on either side. Essentially, this phrase is additional information about these two stones. Um, and we might want to, if, if another strategy to talk about it is, is that if the paragraph ends up being too long and we need to shrink some ideas out of the paragraph, uh, you might end up removing some of these scoopable phrases. They're some of the first things that we can take out, or we might shrink them or shorten them or tighten them up, as we like to say. Okay, good. Keeping forward, without the omens to guide him, comma, Santiago would have returned to Spain, thus he would have never found would have never found his treasure. Okay, so our next error, uh, I've indicated that there's an academic sentence error here, so we need the correct transitional punctuation to connect this sentence properly. So as we know, for our academic sentence, we need the semicolon, then we have our uh, Humtatania family member, or as we call it, it's a conjunctive adverb, right? Um, so it's a little transitional word that we use to link these ideas together in an academic voiced sentence, okay? He would have never found his treasure. So now that we've made that revision, we are fine. Okay, so we're, I'm noticing that we're m moving close to the video um, 
length that I'm looking for, so I will uh, wrap this up and then I'll make another short video to complete the editing process.